Oh, that's a good answer. Watching a lot of people say like Game of Thrones. That's not guilty. I don't feel guilty about Everyone that. Everyone should be watching that. Yes, if but you're not, there's something wrong I with you. I love that. This episode features an interview with Gail Simmons. If you're a foodie or a reality TV junkie, you already know her. She's a judge on Bravo Network's Emmy-winning series, Top Chef. But before becoming the media personality she is today, Simmons was and is a trained culinary expert and established journalist. She is also a best-selling author and recently released her second book, Bringing It Home, Favorite Recipes from a Life of Adventurous Eating. In 2013, she was appointed Entrepreneur in Residence at Babson College, a mentoring role where she works with student entrepreneurs to develop food-related social enterprises. In 2014, Simmons and her business partner, Samantha Hanks, founded Bumble Pie Productions, an original content company featuring new female voices in the food and lifestyle space. Many of you guys are going to be able to relate to her story because post-college, she she found herself with a degree she couldn't really use and didn't really want to use, and as her friends were heading off to law school, medical school, and entry-level corporate jobs, she wanted to forge her own path. She wrote out all that she wanted to do and be and was left with the question, uh, how do I make a career out of writing and cooking and eating? This was before food blogs and YouTube channels and Instagram foodies, so she had to get creative. You will love this interview if you want to combine multiple passions into one or forge a unique career for yourself. So let's dive into this episode with Gail Simmons. Thank you for joining me for another episode of The Pursuit. I'm Kelsey Humphreys here with Gail Simmons. I'm sure you all already knew that because you recognize her from Top Chef. Thank you so much for letting us come into your trailer today. It's very glamorous, isn't it? <laughs> this is so cool though. People don't get to see this. So this is her trailer on set at Top Chef Junior, right? That's, right. That's what you're filming this mm -hmm. week. Um, I'm so excited because you're not usually in LA. So we just happen to be in LA at the same time, which is awesome. And I love your story because I think we kind of live in this age where someone's like, I want to talk about food on TV. And they just go into like TV, you know, media, YouTube, I'm going to start. But you actually went through all these different stages in your career, which I love. So let's kind of start back at the beginning. You decided that you wanted to write about food. And so what was step one? I mean, you went, you, sure. you tell us. Well, um, first of all, I didn't necessarily know how or exactly what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. When I graduated college, there were so fewer opportunities than there are now to be in the food industry. There was really like working at a newspaper in the food pages or a magazine in the food pages or being a chef at a restaurant. Yeah. So when I graduated college, I realized I wanted to be in the food world. I loved cooking. I loved restaurants. I loved the culture of food and how food seemed to permeate so much of what we do, how we eat, how we socialize how we um, sort of create traditions, yeah. celebrate milestones in right. our lives. But I really didn't know how to make it a career at all. Mm -hmm. um, I also knew that I loved to write and I loved to cook. I loved to eat. So when I graduated, I came home to my parents' house and really didn't know what to do, but that was sort of brewing in my mind until someone, a family friend, told me actually to write down what I love to do on a piece of paper. And then I can go do it because I was sort of floundering. All my girlfriends <laughs> knew what they wanted to do when we graduated. Mm -hmm. Go to law school, go to business school, um, become a dentist, become an art historian. And I really, all I knew was that I loved to eat and cook. So I wrote those things down and this family friend of mine said, well, then just go do it. Like, why aren't you just doing it? How can be a job? You just have to figure out how to pursue it. So I ended up landing an internship at a local, I grew up in Toronto, Canada, mm -hmm. and at a local magazine, the city magazine of Toronto called Toronto Life. Um, it was an internship because I loved to write and I knew I would learn about writing mm -hmm. and learn about what it was like to write in a, in a you know, publication, yeah. a professional publication. And so the internship was three or four months long. And oh, so I landed an internship at Toronto Life magazine and was following around the editors doing research and fact checking and I kept being drawn to the food editor and the food critic for the magazine and they let me eat at restaurants with them and would let me help with their research and it was there that it really solidified for me that that's what I wanted to do, that I loved food, I loved 
the buzz and the energy of restaurants and I loved learning about new dishes. And so that was the moment that I sort of realized this, mm. there was something here that was really drawing me in. Um, from there, I went to work for uh, a big national newspaper as an editorial assistant. And I was working for their weekend section, which was their sort of arts and leisure and mm -hmm. entertainment. And it also had their food section in it. And again, I found myself following around the food editor and asking him to let me write for him. And slowly he let me write little stories here and there. Mm -hmm. And after about a year, I came to him and said, well, this is what I really want to do. How do I become a food critic? Or how do I you know, become a food writer? And his response to me was, well, that's great. But just because you like to eat doesn't mean you know anything about food. So the first step is becoming a professional, becoming an expert in your field, because you need to differentiate yourself from everyone else out there who thinks it's cool to just eat, right, um, right. which is fun. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> if you want to write with authority and speak the language of food, you really need to understand the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And it was true. I was 23 years old and I had no idea. All I knew was that I wanted to do this. Yeah. And so then the next step was figuring out how. So you went to culinary school. You were an assistant to a to the Vogue food critic. Correct. And then you were an, you were a marketing manager for, I don't know how to say his name, Danielle? Danielle Bulidl. Okay, for a few years. So all these different things, pre-television, which of those do you think played the biggest part? I mean, I know every single thing probably helps, but for someone watching, would you say definitely go to culinary school and definitely become an assistant or which thing? I mean, all of it, it's every piece is a rung on the ladder where you gain information and experience. I went to culinary school. I, I moved to New York City, went to professional culinary school and spent a year just cooking my heart out, understanding the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And then I went to work as a line cook. I went um, after culinary school, I did an apprenticeship at a restaurant and then I kept cooking because mm -hmm. as I was explained, sorry, as someone explained to me, just because you've done everything once in school doesn't mean that you are a chef. Uh, yeah. You know, you, the same way that you graduate medical school, you're not performing open heart surgery the next day. Right. So I understood that just because I had gone to culinary school, that doesn't make me all of a sudden know everything. You need to go into a real kitchen and experience practically what it what it's like to cook on the line. So I did that for a while, and it was only after I had done that for a little bit and felt like I'd honed my skills and I understood kitchen, mm -hmm. professional kitchen, that I felt like I could then leave it to pursue the writing part because I now had the knowledge um, and the expertise to do that. And being an assistant to an amazing writer taught me about research. So I learned about cooking, mm -hmm. then I learned about research and really about how to write because you can't just write without understanding how to research a story. And the mm -hmm. writer, Jeffrey Steingarten, who I worked with, was an unbelievable researcher. And he always told me that if you do enough research, the story writes itself. Mm -hmm. And so I, he was rigorous in the way that he wrote and, and researched his work. So I loved that I got to do recipe testing for him and was at the library and was you know traveling and researching ingredients. And that was sort of part of my arsenal. Yeah. And from there, when I worked for Danielle, I then went to work for a chef in a restaurant for doing a totally different set of things. I was doing marketing and public relations and events and working behind the scenes out running a restaurant group. Mm -hmm. And that I always like to think was sort of my MBA mm -hmm. because otherwise I hadn't done anything in the real life of the economics of the restaurant industry. Mm -hmm. What it really takes to run a restaurant, what a chef right. really goes through with margins and staffing and real estate costs and um, you know all the elements that make restaurants possible. And Daniel taught me all of that and more. So it was taking all of those pieces together that sort of made me have the knowledge I had to put it all together and then finally call myself an expert. And then you went to food and wine. Yes. What's interesting at that point of the story is Coming up, don't miss her number one piece of advice for achieving success. But first, I want to remind you that if you love these celebrity interviews, there are three ways you can support this show, this free show here on the internet, you guys. First, you can like this video and share it with your hustler and dreamer friends. Second, you can subscribe to the channel. And lastly, you can sign up to join Pursuit Nation. When you do, I will give you my top 10 success hacks for real life. How do we take all the tactics in these interviews with millionaires and celebrities and actually apply them to pursuing our own dream? That's what I break down in this PDF. Get your free copy at thepursuit.tv slash top 10. 
And then you went to food and wine. Yes. What's interesting at that point of the story is that at that point, I feel like I would be like, all right, I'm ready to be the main editor. You know, bring not me on. Close. But you were not, you were in a different, you weren't even writing, right? I mean, you I were in no, marketing I in the different departments. Mm -hmm. So was that kind of like, I just want to get my foot in the door, sort of? Absolutely. I finally had an opportunity to take all that I learned in food and in the business of restaurants mm -hmm. and take it to a publication. But what I had learned when I was working for Danielle was that I didn't necessarily just want to write. I wanted to be with people. I was really good at the social aspect of restaurants and I loved the events and I loved understanding the marketing and the business and how it all came together. And I loved that every night was theater and the adrenaline of a restaurant. Yeah. So going to sit at a desk alone and write all day wasn't what I wanted to do anymore exactly. Yeah. And when I went to Food & Wine, they gave me the opportunity to ultimately become the event director and run the Food & Wine Classic in Aspen, which is arguably the biggest culinary event of the year. Mm -hmm. So that was a dream. I got to put all of those pieces together and I was still writing and using my head and using my hands and uh, working with the best chefs in the world. So it just kind of felt like I'd landed in a place that I was able to use all my skills that I had gathered and put them yeah. to use. So that is great advice. And I love how, I feel like right now we live in this world where everyone's like, just go really specific 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 and you just just said the opposite i mean you learned all of it which i think is great advice so then as a food and wine editor they partner up with food network or no bravo bravo and sorry okay. and um they were going to pick you know they had different editors do screen tests they chose you now you're in media which is a totally mm -hmm. different beast so maybe just kind of talk about your advice for people who want to get into the media business whether that's the food side or not because now you you're into your 15th about to start the 15th season of Top We Chef. just finished shooting the 15th season of that Top Chef. That is crazy. Yeah. I feel like that went by very it fast. Really, I was seven when we started. <laughs> yeah, so. You must have been. Um, and so <laughs> you've got a, you're like an expert in that as well now. So what's your advice for those people? Uh, well, you know, being in front of the camera wasn't anything I set out to do. I, mm -hmm. That wasn't my goal. I'm not an actress. I'm, uh, I'm about food first and foremost. <laughs> and I got in front of the camera because of those expertise. So my advice is always, you have to be an expert. You have to own and, and differentiate yourself and and take the time to learn how to do it well. If that's being the host of a TV show, if that's being a chef, if that's being an expert, if that's being you know, a musician, or if you're an expert at whatever it is that you feel passionate about, the only way that people will trust you, identify with you, and connect with you as an audience and as a viewer is if they believe what you're selling, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. And so I think it took a while to figure it out. It, it wasn't like I snapped my fingers and all of a sudden knew how to do everything on television. It was intimidating. But the more I did it and the more comfortable I was with, the more I realized that um, if the viewer trusts you, especially on Top Chef, because they can't taste the food, they really look to, to us, the judges, mm -hmm. to explain that experience. And the more I can do that for them and the more I can be sort of the expert and be a professional about that experience, then the more they'll want to see me and the more they'll want me to do. and it just sort of rolled out like that. And all yeah. of a sudden I found that I was spending a lot more time on camera mm -hmm. than doing the other parts of my job. So great. Okay. Last two questions. Cause I know you have to get no, to your kiddo. Okay. So I heard you say in an interview, I thought this was so good because it was a podcast and he asked you the keys to your success, which is of course like this whole, my whole show. Tell us. Yeah. Yeah. Success. I wish I knew. And the, well, you thing. said that you had learned when to keep your mouth shut and when to open to taste. So what, what I think it's harder for us, it's harder for me, I don't know, maybe just people in media to keep our mouth shut. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard for me too. <laughs> so how did you learn when, when is that? When, when did, when are those times? How, how did you figure out that kind of balance? I think with anything, no matter what field you're in, you never know everything. There's always more to learn mm -hmm. and you can learn from everyone. I mean, I'm shooting Top Chef Junior with 13 year olds who are teaching me something new about food every single day. Wow. So I think the important part is that you never stop learning and you'll, but you'll only learn if you keep your mouth shut and your ears open and you really pay attention and listen and uh, be humbled by what you do. Like there's no way that I'm, I'm not a chef. I know what I know and I think I know a great deal, but there's always so much more to know. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that being a great listener, especially if you're an interviewer, for example, <laughs> and I spend a lot of my time interviewing and questioning chefs, right? Um, in understanding how to listen and how to absorb that information and take it with you and, and then implement it into whatever you do next. So I, I really do believe, especially the first decade 
of my mm. career in food, it was spent with my head down and my eyes and ears open, and I only opened my mouth when someone put food in it. <laughs> See, such good advice. Okay, and I lied a little bit because I have a few more questions. That's okay. So um, I wanted to know, a, a lot of people in successful fields, that, or who are successful at their field, when we get to health and food and diet, a lot of them view, view food as fuel. And so they have like regimented, like they have the same thing for breakfast, the same thing for lunch. You know, they are all about efficiency and energy and all that. So I wondered if you had routines and habits or if you just love to keep mixing it up. I feel so sorry for those people. <laughs> They're really missing out on the pleasures yeah, of life. Better. Yeah, um, probably. I believe in moderation. Mm -hmm. I believe in health and taking care of yourself. I actually think because I eat for a living, I have an obligation to my family, to myself, to take care of my body and to mm -hmm. pay attention to what goes into it. And actually, I interestingly, I'm probably much more conscious and knowledgeable about what's going into my body than people who spend all their time thinking about and being really regimented because I spend my life thinking about food. Right. But food to me is one of life's greatest pleasures. And that doesn't mean you need to eat truffles and <laughs> Uh, you know, butter and chocolate at every I meal, wish we could. right? That would be nice. <laughs> but I'm like egalitarian. I'm a real omnivore when it comes to food. I think that the perfect cucumber or the perfect peach is just as extraordinary mm -hmm. as the perfect piece of chocolate cake. And I want it all, yeah. but I want it in moderation. You never need my biggest lesson in this job has been learning to not finish my plate every time, you mm -hmm. know, and understanding that there'll always be another meal. I'm lucky, or we are lucky, yeah. that we have that privilege. Mm -hmm. A lot of people in this country, in this world, do not, and that's not lost on me. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that thinking about taking care of myself, eating fresh food, eating food that is sourced from trusted places, right. with ingredients that are whole and healthful, is important to me. But I'm also never going to deny myself a bite of ice cream because I promise you at the end of my life, <laughs> I'm never going to regret having that bite of ice cream. Yeah. I will regret not having had an extra bite of ice cream because at the end of the day, yeah, I think those little pleasures are what matters most. I love that. Okay. Wrapping up, both of us talked off camera about our daughters who are about mm -hmm. the same age. Yeah. So what's your advice on work-life balance? You know, you have a crazy job, crazy hours, travel. And you have a little one, and either, and you're a wife too. Yeah. And you have a household. Oh, so, that right? Yeah, we also have to do that part. So Third on the list these days. <laughs> yeah. uh, Sorry, men. Yeah. Sorry, husband. Love you, but <laughs> what's your advice on that? It's the hardest thing about being mm -hmm. human. I think you know, men, women, we, anyone who wants to have a family, these are really difficult, every single day problems, and I don't think there's a single person who's immune to them. And if I had that answer, wow, I probably be a wealthy, wealthy yeah, person. Yeah, bajillionaire. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and maybe happier. I don't know. I think you can only do the best you can do. Mm -hmm. And um, I do have to travel for my job. I, I work and I love what I do. And I spent the better part of my life working up to being able to do what I do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also love being a mom. It's the most extraordinary accomplishment of anything. Mm -hmm. um, and my daughter is the greatest gift. Yeah most delicious thing uh, <laughs> that I've ever known. So it's about well, it's about just trying to do the best you can every day to to take that time for vacation and really be present when you can be to know that she sees me as a role model and that she will grow to understand what I do and that it has afforded us great opportunities for her as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, she's an awesome traveler and I take her on the road with me all the time. She's here with me in LA for the week. Uh, I was just shooting Top Chef in Colorado and uh, I was gone on and off for several weeks and she came with me and she was there for 10 days with me. She came to set, we took some days off and went camping together. Perfect. So it's about really enjoying the quality of time that we get together mm -hmm. when we can't always have the quantity. And there's guilt and there's days when I feel like I've failed or I'm not giving her enough of myself but then there's also times when I know that because I have a schedule that's a little quirky I don't work a nine-to-five job yeah there's also a lot of days where I have my mornings free I don't have to run and be at a desk at you right. know the crack of dawn and I get a lot more time with my daughter than a lot of my girlfriends yeah so you know it's never gonna be perfect but you have to 
tailor it to who you are and your family and our and your kids will adapt. Yeah, love that. So, so hard though. It is hard. I and I the women I interview who are at the top of their game, like I just talked to today, Sharon Rector, she was like, I just abandoned guilt. I just gave it up. I'm like, wow. That's freeing. I, yeah, I want to do that. Ah, I'm working too. on it. Me I'm too. working on every it. day. Yeah, just being present and you know, she she said this is so good, she said that everywhere you are is a choice. So I'm choosing here. I'm yes. choosing to be, I'm like, well, that is good. It's true. Yeah. That's so, genius. And also I think you're so smart and to see the benefit of what you do have. I mean, you have a flexible schedule. It's not always flexible. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's cray cray. Are yeah. people still saying cray cray? Yeah, I say cray cray. Okay. My daughter definitely says cray cray. Okay. So we're cool. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, I love that. Tell us about your book. Tell us about the book coming sure. out and um, where can people get it? When does it come out? Tell us everything. My first cookbook, I've written books before with other people and I've written a book myself that was more of a memoir, the story of how it got to where I am, which was called Talking With My Mouth Full. Mm -hmm. And I always wanted to write a cookbook of all the recipes and lessons that I've learned in the last 20 years in this job and longer, my whole life. And I finally took the time to gather all those recipes together. The book is called Bringing It Home, mm -hmm. Favorite Recipes from a Life of Adventurous Eating. It comes out October 24th wherever yeah. books are sold awesome. in America and Canada too, because I'm Canadian. <laughs> yep. um, and I, I, I think that it's really the culmination of all the things I've learned on the road, learned outside in my travels in the world, working through all these amazing mentors and exploring so many restaurants and destinations through my job and through my life in general and bringing all of those ideas, tips, tricks, lessons home to cook for the people that I love the most. So it's all home cooking. It's all meant to be food that is simple, made for your family and friends to enjoy. None of it's fussy or fancy, but every recipe I think has a little twist or a little piece of extra information that teaches you something and I hope makes you a better cook. Awesome, I can't wait. Well, thank you so much again for letting Thanks. us barge in and we'll be right back after this with Fast Facts. I loved a lot of what she said, but here are my top few keys to success for the rest of us from my interview with Gail Simmons. Number one, just get a foot in the door. She surveyed her options and decided that writing would be the best place to start. So she landed an internship with a local lifestyle magazine. Focus on one area first, jump in and start learning. Number two, decide to go pro. At some point, Simmons got serious. She moved to New York, she attended culinary school, but she realized even that wasn't enough to be able to write and speak about food and cooking for a living. So she decided to work in kitchens. She worked as a marketing manager for a group as restaurants and learned the business side of the business. So realize at some point that you're going to have to put the investment in to maybe get some additional schooling, to get certified, to get the experience that you need to truly become an expert. Number three, Three, listen and learn as much as you can. I love her famous line, keep your mouth shut so you can learn how to listen, but open it enough so you can learn how to taste. She credits a huge part of her success to absorbing as much as she could in each of her positions along the way, which by the way, you guys, means she wasn't rushing through each part of the journey. Number four, pay attention to what you love most. Though Simmons never saw herself as a media personality, she started to hone in on the parts of the work that she loved most. This meant she wouldn't stay a writer forever because she realized she loved the social part of the work and didn't want to just sit at her computer and write all day anymore. So force yourself to be patient and learn many parts of your industry and then realize which ones that you like the best so that you can be successful when you niche down. Number five, set yourself apart by being you. Simmons is successful as a television food critic, not only because of her expertise, but also because she is genuine and honest, which leads to trust from the audience. Favor from the audience explains why she's been on the show for 15 seasons. The only way people will trust you, identify you, and connect with you as an audience and as a viewer is if they believe what you're saying and what you're selling. Lastly, number six, stay teachable. At this point, you guys, I'm surprised if a guest, no matter how established or famous, doesn't mention learning and continuing to learn along the way. Simmons said when we sat down for our interview that even then, as she was shooting Top Chef Junior with 13 year olds, that those young kids were teaching her something new every day. This kind of self-awareness and genuine humility explains why audiences love her. Make sure to stay open and teachable as you weave your passions together and become an established expert in your field. 
Now I'd love to know what was your favorite lesson from this interview? Leave a comment and if you want to learn the juicy behind the scenes details like what was she like in person, how did I land this interview, bloopers and more, go to the pursuit.tv slash Gail Simmons. All right, we are back with Fast Facts. Here we go. Chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Scrabble or charades? Charades. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Early bird or night owl? Night owl. Winter or summer? Summer. Wine or beer? Both. <laughs> Pancakes or waffles? Pancakes. Guilty pleasure TV show? <sighs> Big Little Lies. Oh, that's a good answer. Watching a lot of people out. say like Game of Thrones. That's not guilty. I feel yeah. guilty about Everyone that. Everyone should be watching that. Yes, if but you're not, there's something wrong I with you. I love that. That's a good answer. <laughs> okay. Uh, what's the last thing you remember Googling? This is always a good one. I did it not two hours ago. Um, <laughs> let me think. Let me think. I actually Googled a game show from my mm. childhood and wanting to know when it was on the air because... <laughs> It's a game show that aired in Canada when I was little called Just Like Mom, a kid's game show. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wanted to tell someone about it and I needed facts. Oh, cool. Uh, what's the wallpaper on your cell phone? A picture of my daughter. Recent book you read? I'm reading a book right now called What Alice Forgot. Mm -hmm. Favorite book of all time? Uh, there's several, but the first one that popped to mind is a book called Life of Pi. Oh, yeah. Uh, what is, who's the last person that called or texted you? My husband. Last vacation you took? Last week to Gloucester, Massachusetts, which is a little fishing village north of Boston. My entire uh, husband's side of the family, 25 of us. Oh, fun. A uh, hobby. Huh. <laughs> Who has time for those when you're a mom? <laughs> yeah, that's a good answer to that question. A uh, favorite snack? This might be tough. Popcorn. Um, and if you're going to go crazy and just indulge hardcore, like forget about diet and just go all in, what would you have? Oh my God. So many things. Um, <laughs> super spicy chicken wings, salt and vinegar, potato chips, <laughs> and a nice, and a chocolate fudge sundae mm, in that order. Up. Uh, if, <laughs> uh, favorite cereal? No, I'm not like a huge cereal person. If anything, oatmeal, like hot oatmeal. Mm. Favorite music right now? There's tons. I'm super into Arcade Fire's new album. Okay. Um, biggest pet peeve? Being condescended to at restaurants. What would your husband say is his biggest pet peeve that you do? There's so many. <laughs> um, husband's pet, biggest pet peeve of mine. Um, looking at my phone when he's talking to me. Yeah, I, get, I think a lot of people say that. Guilty as charged. Um, what were you doing right before this? shooting Top Chef Junior. And what will you be doing right after this? I think I'm actually going to see Lady Gaga at the Forum in LA tonight. Oh, pretty psyched about that. I did not know she was here doing Me that. neither, but my friend has an extra ticket. Amazing. Uh, and what is your next pursuit? What's next for you? Launching this cookbook that I spent two years working on, creating yeah, at home. I know, books are like babies. So they really congratulations are. on Thank that. Thank you. Thank you again so much. I'm Kelsey Humphreys here with the Gail Simmons, and this has been The Pursuit. <laughs>